Hey, everybody, and thanks for tuning in to the Effort of Community Church weekly podcast, a conversation with our pastors and leaders meant to continue encouraging you to know God, know freedom, know purpose, and make a difference. Hey, Effort of Community Church, we like you a lot, and Drew forgot to start my timer, so we might be together for like 30 minutes today. Who knows? I'm Nobody with knows. Joel Bomberger. <laughs> um, and if you're part of the Effort of Community Church community, you know that Joel spoke this last weekend. Actually, I think I wouldn't even call it speaking. I think he delivered to us something that he's about out of his being. And then uh, it was a great weekend because the yeah. graduate students were part of the prayer ministry team. Yeah. And just, uh, you know, I love the fact that our graduates were looking at him to be like, we're not just honoring you today. We're honoring you by asking you to bring your gifts. That's I just right. thought that was right on. Yep. I'm so glad Kevin suggested that. I was like, this is exactly right. That's right. And so many powerful stories and testimonies of individuals getting touched during the ministry time. Oh, man. I I have the privilege of uh, sitting on our Tuesday morning weekend team where we review some of the stuff that came out of it, man. And it's powerful. Let me just quickly, I got, we're going to blow this time so bad today. So I was in, (laughs) I was in New England all weekend doing some reunions with some communities up there. And I was just, I, I was carrying such a burden of sadness around um, the post-Christian mind right mm. now, right? How people have mm-hmm. moved on. And I'm and almost to the point where some of the friends I was hanging out with up there, I'm like, Jesus, how do they need you? I don't even know anymore. Like, right. Like, give me a burden. Give me a heart for how people need you and tr- so I can translate to you. And I, so I was carrying something. And so here I am at a weekend where you're up there talking on the Holy Spirit. We have the young people doing the ministry. <laughs> and I'm in the first steps room, and some guy comes up to receive Jesus. Wow. Who is this academic off the charts, man. If I could tell you the story. Of, wow. So he, 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 all that to say, just the way he received Jesus is, is so, you know, everyone yeah. receives Jesus in different ways, but yeah. he was totally into the reasonableness of Christianity. I'm like, what an awesome day when we have God do what he did yes. um, <laughs> f- at, at the front of the room, God do what he did through the youth, and then I'm sitting in the first steps room leading, I mean, being part of seeing the Spirit move on some guy's life. That's man, thank you, Jesus. Intellectually responding to Jesus. And man. I'm like, man, what a good day. Yeah, thank you, Jesus. Fun Love story. that. Anyway, now back to the topic. So we are in the middle of our By My Spirit series. And um, I think so much of it, when I look at who's speaking, where they're speaking, when they're speaking, it's people bringing something from themselves that they carry in regards to the Holy Spirit. One thing you said that meant a lot to me, um, I put it this way in the discussion notes that were sent out this week. You said, we we believe we're sealed by the Spirit in our salvation. There's an indwelling. Right. But then there's a Him coming upon you kind of moment, man. Talk more about it. What what was driving that? Yeah, I mean, that's... It's something as I've studied, I've noticed the distinction all throughout Scripture. As you see, even in the Old Testament, I think looking at the Old Testament actually shows it more prevalent, is it uses the language a lot, come upon you. And it's really like the Holy Spirit cloaks you, clothes you, as Luke 24 actually uses it, for a purpose. Mm. And that purpose is actually for others. Mm. It's you're coming to bring deliverance, you're coming to bring healing, you're coming to bring supernatural ability that you cannot do on your own. And I believe it's, I mean, it's unrelated to a degree to our salvation Mm. because the salvation and the indwelling of the Spirit has to do with our soul. Our spirit Mm. becomes one with God. That is what causes our, our spirit to become a life-giving spirit that goes on forever with Jesus. Mm-hmm. But when he comes on us, that is for the purpose of the ministry mm-hmm. and ministering to others. Um, no, yeah. and it's a biggie for me because I, I too came from one of these backgrounds that had such an emphasis on being sealed by the spirit, what you're referring to as the indwelling. Yeah. And then literally as I began to do ministry, I recognized like I wasn't getting it done by my own power. Right. Or worse. I was high. I call myself a high functioning minister. I could right. deliver, um, and it looked like something was happening, and it was in some ways. But then you hit these walls where, man, you're just like spirit. I need a power yeah. from beyond my ability to to work this through in my own mind or be articulate, etc. And yep. that is what I was hearing from you, and I continue to be impressed as this week is we're not even up there saying, hey. Those of us who only believe in the indwelling or the sealing of the Spirit are wrong. We're simply saying there's more, man. Yep. There is more, and it's linked to power for service, right? Totally. And I, that's what was coming across for me. Yeah. And that's why I love the analogy, to be honest, of like uh, scissors. 
using a scissors mm. to mow your lawn. Oh, dude, this right one. Versus a big lawn mower, um, and it's just like the reality is you can do it. You can totally do cut some grass and you can do ministry or do those things on your own strength and you can have a measure of effectiveness, mm-hmm. um, but it's still going to take more time. It's going to you know, require more of you. You're going to get burnt out. Mm-hmm. But when the Holy Spirit power comes on you, it's all of a sudden with ease that you're doing way more than you could ever personally do. That's right. Um, and I, I think it's having that distinction – is a lot of the, the non-charismatics kind of, they fault the Pentecostals because mm-hmm. they say things like, oh, well, you're saying I don't have the Holy Spirit, or you're saying this, like, no, that's not what we're saying at all. No. Um, mm-hmm. And then a lot of the charismatics sometimes are kind of like, well, you don't have the Holy Spirit. It's like, no, we all right. do have it and all need more. Yeah. And I think that is mm-hmm. the defining characteristic because we can get caught up as maybe more charismatic of like, oh, I had that moment. You know, I remember five years ago when I had a baptism of the Holy Spirit moment. It's like, well, how about now? That's right. There's yeah. more the Lord wants to give you now for yeah. a I love that. You actually purpose. highlighted that at one point. You're like, hey, and there's even rebaptizing that goes on in the Spirit throughout the New Testament. Yes. You know, you know, Jesus does it here, then they have Pentecost, and then they're later told that they're filled with the Spirit again as they're right. meetings and believing and praying. Yep. Um, it, I, I, I am a convert. Now, that said, <laughs> I thought we'd do this for fun. All right. Um, I thought we'd both answer the question of, if, if, if we could have more of the Holy Spirit in one area of our lives, right? As a matter of fact, we put it this way, what is one area you want to step out and see the Holy Spirit's a gift at work in your life? What would yours be? I'm happy to share mine too, but yeah, you I, better have an answer for this because no, you're I, the one who gave me it to put in the discussion notes this week. I so. do. Um, I personally, I do. I want to see more extraordinary miracles, mm-hmm. and I believe the Holy Spirit wants to do that. I believe God wants to do that. And it does require a greater level of stepping out in faith and confidence in the Holy Spirit. And along with that, I do want to see, for me personally, a greater level of clarity in words of knowledge. I am so happy with the level that I've seen and even the level we see at ECC. But I know that the Lord wants to be even more specific Mm -hmm. to really make his power and glory known. Yeah, dude, right on. All right, here's my... I got two. Am I allowed to do that? Yeah, I just did um, two, so go for it. You way to slide it in. I would say my first is I spend a lot of time up front talking. Yeah. And I really relate to the Dwight Moody quote you gave. Yeah. That, And I love Dwight used to say this. He says, I don't think I was actually preaching different messages. I right. actually think the Spirit worked on him in a different way. Exactly. So I'd have to say that. I love yep. bringing the contribution of how much I love to deliver truth. Um, yep in a teaching format, but man, I want the Holy Spirit on it in a new way. 100%. So Jesus do that. Now, if I would have to say, though, the new area that I want to get in, I believe there's a future in what I call prophetic hospitality, prophetic hospitality. I think a lot of the great words of knowledge, words of wisdom, the revelatory gifts will be delivered over dinner tables in this coming harvest. I believe it won't just be in events, but we are going to talk about an event and how God uses those. But I'm, I'm going to be working with the HarvestNet School of Ministry this fall. Um, matter of fact, that's breaking news, just so you know. I'm going Whoa! to be stewarding the HarvestNet School of Ministry. Yeah. Um, but uh, one of the things I'm adding is um, um, hospita- the prophetic hospitality, what it means to see revelatory gifts delivered in Love the that. naturalness of doing dinners and life together, etc. And I would just want to see the Holy Spirit move yes. on that. So that. You come for a dinner, and it's not even a setup. You're not a project, but you leave something's framed yes. different in your life because the Holy Spirit showed up as you we were that. doing dinner, as we were doing life together. Anyway, that's the areas I would want to see happen. Uh, but, uh, but, we, but I want to jump to something, though. Um, uh, you and Amy moved back here, man, right? Yeah. So you're, you're traveling around with circuit riders. You're getting a chance to see the climactic moves of God all over yeah. the country. Uh, and, man, sweet stories coming out of that followed your uh, role as resource evangelist. I'll just remind you all that... Joel and Amy were resource evangelists, are resource evangelists with us, meaning we recognize and gifting on someone. Matter of fact, I was the other, I was the resource mission consultant to the church, <laughs> meaning the church recognized, hey, you guys carry a gift to do something. So, right. uh, and, and so you do guys carry that gift to do that. You were out running around with circuit riders, among others, doing that, yet you felt a call recently back here. Could you tell us a little more about it? 
Yeah. Yeah. I never, uh, both of our families are from here and we have such strong connections here, but I never really honestly imagined that we would move back here. Mm -hmm. Uh, We really enjoyed our time in California and God kind of moving us wherever the spirit blows, if you will. Mm -hmm. And I began to have dreams, a lot of different dreams, which is another way God really speaks Mm -hmm. to us of youth gathering in fields and thousands of even more than youth people gathering on fields Mm -hmm. and the reign of the spirit coming down here specifically in Lancaster. And this was all while we were serving some youth gatherings that were already happening during the pandemic in 2020. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we saw uh, over 50 baptisms in a month's period Mm -hmm. on a field where there was 500 Mm -hmm. kids gathered on a field and then at 10 p.m. baptized in the river, you know, it was incredible. So we started to have Mm -hmm. these dreams and I was like, I think God is doing something in Lancaster. So we're like, we need to go back more, all of that. And then there was a breaking point where we're like, I think we need to move back to see what God is doing something significant. Because then we had a a second dream where, uh, I won't go into all of it, but essentially there was 500 youth in a barn and God's Mm. glory showed up in such a profound way just like in the dream I knew it was like the Welsh revival. Mm -hmm. And I woke up at three in the morning and I felt the Lord say, what I'm doing in Lancaster is going to be like the Welsh revival and the Haberdies revival, Um, which both had components that they were led by youth Mm -hmm. um, and that youth were even kind of the ministry team, if you will, Mm -hmm. or were the ones who kind of inspired it, but it was so far reaching. That's right. So I just was like, my sights are set to Lancaster. And this is a testimony of what happened this last weekend. Like, even though you're up front there, and, and man, your ministry goes beyond youth. There's no doubt that you you catalyze some stuff through youth, which is wonderful. I mean, you're up there. The youth are a part of their prayer teams, and we see someone come to know Jesus that would not normally yeah. respond to that 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 kind of paradigm of youthness, right? right? So I have to tell you, man, I think. I think youth uh, as a catalytic for what's coming is a huge part of this thing, man. But it's not going to stop there because I don't want people to view... Like, for instance, we're going to talk a little bit about this this idea of for revival meetings. I don't want people to view it as just for youth, right? Right. I just want to say this. There is an anointing that youth are going to play in it yes. to see a dynamic that's released that's beyond youth. Right? Yes. So let's chat a little bit about that now. So Great. I want to give a little backstory here. Um I, 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 a matter of fact, let me even go even a step back. This Thursday night, my Connect Group meets, uh, the Connect Group that meets in my home is meeting. And once a quarter, I do a night called What I Get to See That You Don't. Because I, because of my role, yeah. I get to see some things that the average person that's totally. uh, doing vocational life, being a part of the faith community, don't always get to see. So it's one of those nights where I sit and I'm like, here's everything I've been seeing going on. And I'm going to share with them that a couple months ago, Wayne Kaufman came to me, hands me a book. <laughs> Remember this? You know where yeah, I'm yeah, going yeah. with this? Hands me a book that's like, um, that's about the second coming of Jesus. And yeah. he's like, Jim, I need you to read this, and then I need you to do lunch with me and to tell me what you think. Yep. And, you know, I get handed a lot of books, right? So <laughs> when Wayne Kaufman hands me, I'm like, Wayne, you stinker. Okay, I'll read this thing. No, then he calls me back like three days later. He's like, are you done? I'm like, Wayne, I'm, you know, like, I'm a I got little busy, dude. On. I got, you know, <laughs> are you kidding me? Um, it's date night, Wayne. Leave me alone. Um, so, um. Sure enough, man, I meet with him next week for lunch. And I have to tell you, when I was reviewing this book, I was moved by it, yeah. right? The, about the second coming of Jesus, not so much as this thing that takes us out of here, but this thing that motivates us that we want people living their fullness in Christ now yes. so we can step into this next thing that Christ wants to be yeah. doing in us and through us. And so all that to say, man, I was moved by it, then Chris reads it, and he's moved by it, and then we get in touch with you. So we held a little meeting a couple weeks ago where a couple of us just got together to talk about, is there going to be some kind of outpouring linked to the fact that Jesus is doing a deep work um, even before his return, right? Now, again, you're not hearing me name some dates or anything like that. I'm simply saying this. He is raising an urgency level. For what reason? I don't need to know. All I need to know in obedience is... There is an urgency level being yes. raised, like or a water table <clears throat> that's rising that we need to respond to, right? Mm-hmm. And so we bounce it off of Joel, bounce it off of Luke Weaver with 
uh, YWAM Lancaster, etc. And we are now are sitting in meetings. Matter of fact, this morning, yeah. there was 35 of us as leaders in this community that all gathered together this morning simply to pray and to welcome the work of yeah. God, right? And so I am pretty pumped that um, there is a, uh, a humbling that's happening among leaders right now to say, Lord, speak, Lord, your servants are yeah. listening, right? Yep. That, and so we're doing that right now. One of the ways we decided to do active listening was let's just step out and start to hold some meetings and see yes. what God does with a classic revival meeting. Tell yeah. us more, man. What's on yeah. your heart? And I would love to, just to um, respond to what you're saying is, I think in every even kind of great move of God or in every generation, there has been a sense of urgency that rises yeah. even on the return of Christ. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's a healthy urgency that the Spirit deposits even mm -hmm. since you see Peter and Paul in the old in the New Testament saying, "Hey, his return is near," mm -hmm. you know, and and John writing Revelation, they had a sense of urgency, so that's a good thing, yeah. um, and I think is important for the life of the church mm -hmm. as long as we don't disengage from based in that right based exactly in that right as well uh, yeah yeah exactly like we're getting out of here soon right that's so like okay then no more right. education no more business anyway mm -hmm. um, so this summer we just decided why don't we just put up a tent in a field somewhere that's close to a downtown hotspot we have specific prophetic words and even mm -hmm. dreams that are given about effort specifically Though people know it's going to be region-wide, there's mm -hmm. been different senses from the Spirit. So we have a field uh, right behind the Ephrata Middle School, and we just I was just like, why don't we just do 10 weeks mm -hmm. of summer gatherings? Mm -hmm. We'll do it Thursday night. It's a great night where there's usually not as much other church functions or other family things, and just see what God does. Mm -hmm. And then by the end of the 10 weeks, we're actually going to finish with nightly gatherings where mm -hmm. Sunday night all the way to Saturday night, we're going to do every night. And simultaneously, that week, they're going to have youth reaching out into the city. They're going to go every afternoon doing outreach and bring, bring people back in the evening. But I felt like now is the time that we've been praying for revival, believing for revival, mm -hmm. but now we actually need to take a step to say, okay, God, in response to obedient faith, we're going to provide a space for you to come mm -hmm. to do what we believe you have spoken about. That's right. Um, so, yeah, Thursday night starting June 2nd, which is next week. And I think it's important to talk about, like, when we say they, here's one of the things that gets me excited about this is, Conversations were held among various leaders right. and communities in this area, man. This yep. is this is not this is not an officially an ECC function. Yeah. This isn't a Joel Bomberger and his ministry function. Yep. This is this is us, a group of us looking at you and going, steward this thing, man. <laughs> but I mean, there are a lot yep. of churches have committed time and energy to this, yep. right? And that's exactly what I mean. Because I'm not like, yeah, I have a word of the Lord for revival. I'm like, no, no, no. I feel like everybody's got a word. And there's been people moving back here from Lancaster. I'm not the only one. Mm -hmm. There is church leaders who have been here for decades who are f having dreams and words about something happening here. So I am saying they, like we've all been experiencing this. And there's been multiple elderships from mm -hmm. multiple large congregations that have all said, we agree that now mm -hmm. seems to be a time. Let's, let's do this this summer and see what God would do. Yeah, that's what I love about it. And, and let's, let's wrap it up on that point. Like, at one level, I mean, uh, this morning during the prayer time, this group, I just kept getting that picture of Samuel hearing God speaking, but going to Eli and saying, hey, was it you, man? Like, right. going to, the, going to uh, and Eli was smart enough to say, you know what, next time you hear that, just say, speak, Lord, your servants listen. So good. Right? And I think that's partly what this is about is, we're big enough, we're resourced enough, we're networked enough, we can hold this event, but this event is merely a step toward God yep. to say, now you do what you want to do. Like, yep. speak, Lord, your servants have prepared a place for you to That's do what right. you want to do. So here's the beauty of this thing. We're not sure what God wants to do. That's right. We do know this. We have an expectation, right? That's right. What's the first night? Thursday what? Thursday, June 2nd. Right. We highly encourage you Thursday, June 2nd. It's in, be right behind the Ephrata of Middle School, backyard of Ephrata. Of Church of the Brethren. Church of the Brethren, right? Uh, and YWAM's blessing us with their tent, man. It's yeah, going to be awesome it's there. Yeah, it's going to be great. And so uh, we hope that you're able to check it out. Now, in closing, just so you know, first of all, thanks for being here, man. Absolutely. Love the fact that you and Amy are part of our community. Um, and we want to say that this coming week, Kevin's sharing part five in our By My Spirit. And then after that, we're going to have Barry Whistler two weeks from now. So we look forward to seeing you there. Be well and have a great week. <laughs>
Hey, thanks again for joining us today. We hope that you've been encouraged by listening and that you'll join us again next week. You can listen to previous episodes, find additional resources, and of course, learn more about us by visiting effortacommunitychurch.com. Thank you.